Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. And now it's time for our second hot topic. So it is said that 7 out of 10 girls in the universities have um, been in some form of sexual harassment in Nigeria, and that is quite sad. So we're talking on why the president should sign the anti-sexual harassment bill to law. And today we have a guest, Omar Wumi Ogunro Timi. She's the executive director of Gender Mobile Initiative, and she'll be shedding some lights on this topic. Good morning, Omar Wumi. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute delight to be here this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Um, we have seven out of ten girls being sexually harassed. That's even in universities. We're still talking about workplace harassment. We're still talking about people on the streets sometimes getting raped and all. Um, why do you think it's important that the president signs this bill to ensure that girls are not being harassed sexually? Thank you very much for that question. Um, I think you've provided um, a bit of background already with the statistics that you just shared. You know, which is even a very recent statistic. I think that statistics, um, you know, was uh, an outcome of the research conducted by the World Bank survey. Um, I would say for a fact that sexual harassment has assumed a critical dimension. Seven out of ten is an epidemic proportion. I would say that it's actually it has actually become a pandemic, and as such, it's important that the president actually signs the anti-sexual harassment bill into law. It's quite unfortunate that our citadel of learning have become the center port of sexual harassment. I imagine that, you know, several years back, environments of learning would probably also assume the same, you know, position as our churches, as our mosques, because they are places that are, you know, supposedly um, assumed to be places that are safe, places that people can seek refuge and fortress. Unfortunately, you know, the reverse is the case these days. Um, female students and even students in general go to school with the fear, with the apprehension of, of sexual harassment, with the apprehension of their body being... Okay, I think we lost that audio for a bit. Um... But yes, that's, that's quite a very sad statistic. Seven out of ten girls. And I know there's this thing... Um, According to the uh, Yes. And then um, there's this thing whereby, you know, students go to school, and then even your lecturers who are supposed to be impacting knowledge into you are, you know, asking you for sex, sex for grades. I think there was even, um, there was like a report on that several years ago. And sometimes people don't even have a choice. It's either you're being raped or then they coerce you into, you know, such acts. And that is, that is quite sad because you would expect that these are the same people that should ensure your safety, that are trying to, like, teach you the way to go, ensure that you're becoming a better citizen. And then they're coming and harassing you sexually. Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> when we come back, if Omar Umi will, uh, will come, Omar Umi will come back, uh, I'd like to know the provisions of this bill that they're proposing that it be passed, how encompassing it mm -hmm. is. Because um, if we're trying to protect the girls, we also will also, we'll be thinking about, for me, I think everybody should be considered in the bill. Um, sometimes, but very few, boys also go through sexual harassment, yes. either from male lecturers or from female lecturers, as mm -hmm. the case may be. They also go through this. I don't know if it is also captured in this, um, in this uh, bill. bill. And then we also find students sometimes that are initiating these things, uh, like a lecturer, I didn't have time to do your assignment, I can't do anything, mm. kind of language. And it becomes uh, so common that the lecturer begins to feel entitled to it mm. uh, at some point. So what will be done also to these students that initiate this, if they can also be uh, proven to have initiated it? Mm. If these things are covered by the bill, then everybody will know that if I behave myself, the bill will uh, cover me, the bill will protect me and all that. So I'd like to know what the provisions of the bill are. Because if it is just one-sided, for me as a person, I, I wouldn't feel it is complete enough. Because when you're talking about injustice, it has to be for everybody. Gender-based, yes, well, the, more, the, most, um, the most vulnerable are the women. Yes. But what about the few men that have to go through all this trauma? Do we have to pass another bill after this one? Mm. So all those things, would like to know what the provisions of the bill 
Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I, I think it's super important that everyone is covered mm -hmm. in a bill. Um, even if it, 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 let's move universities aside, even in homes. You know, you see this auntie or this friend um, that comes and harasses the young You're even talking about boy. friends and aunties, fathers and mothers. We've seen mothers who have given birth to children for their own sons. Yeah, we've seen fathers weird. who have impregnated their own children. Mm -hmm. So we don't even look at <laughs> uncles. Sometimes it's the uncles and aunties that protect the people from their own parents. So mm. uh, it's, it's a general thing that we cannot single out a particular uh, type of people mm. that do this. Because anybody can do it. Yes. The most trusted people can do yes. it and all that. And most fact, times it's usually are, that most way. Times that, yeah. yeah. Because it is, you need to trust someone before you can follow that person to be kidnapped, for, for instance. Mm. No, I'm not saying the one that they do on the roads mm -hmm. and all that. Some people come to the house, give your child sweet and all mm -hmm. that. It's a trusted person and kidnap that person mm -hmm. or rape that person. So sometimes... Or sometimes it's the people that you trust that do these things. Yeah. Fathers, mothers, aunties, uncles, bosses. Can bosses. we talk about the workplaces? Bosses, well. yes. And even employees. Mm -hmm. There are some employees that will enter your DM and you'll be wondering whether in another life you were married. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's all encompassing. So if this bill can, can cater to the needs or, or the protection of all aspects, I'll think it is good enough. But if it does not, well, we'll have to find out from a movie mm -hmm. why it had to be Just only, one gender. Yeah, yeah. If that uh, is what it is. Yeah. I mean, I understand that right now they are fighting for the females, which we would not take from that. Um, but we're just still saying that it would be nice mm -hmm. to also put the men there as well. So we Even know... We, we don't report that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, most I, 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 Sometimes I, the men... The, I think of, it's an ego thing. Like, you don't want nobody to yeah, know we that were, such we were has born happened. Proud. Mm. Every man was born proud, and every man never grows beyond being a baby. It's just the right circumstances and <laughs> the right buttons that you press. Yeah, we know that. We know that the baby. world is ruled by, by women, and we just have the brute strength, that's all. But, you know, even if you go to your house as a married man and you have a, ha a, a wife that you've been married to for 30 years, you still don't know where the matchbox is. You see? Well, as simple true. as that. Mm -hmm. So women rule the world. Like I always say, what a teardrop can achieve, wars cannot true. achieve. So women rule the world. But that's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're talking about vulnerability. And we're saying everybody is vulnerable. We may just want to put very stiff penalties or stiffer penalties for people who are the culprits of this, whether they are the ones that initiated it, whether they were forcefully done. And we, should, we should just know that everybody that commits a crime or does that thing which is not good to us will face a penalty that is something. I, I, I think sometime last month it was in the headline or there was a lady, I think a politician or something, and she was talking about um, People, for instance, men who rape little girls, mm -hmm. uh, so pedophiles, they should be, their genitals should be cut off, and mm -hmm. that should be the repercussion. And I think we took it then off the press because I'd mm -hmm. asked the guest um, if he thinks that was too extreme. And obviously, that's quite extreme because it's barbaric. Um, but yes, I think there should be things in place. So for instance, is a person going to serve um, a prison sentence? And how long would that be before they come out? Because mm -hmm. sometimes you see the fact that a lot of these people would um, rape people. Let's, let's take like a rape case, for instance. A lot of people will rape someone. They go to jail. Two, three years, they're out again. And we've seen people, another. yes, they commit the same almost. crime over and over again because the punishment is not as severe, it's not as grave. So you feel like, oh, I'll just serve how many years? Uh, don't but understand. It also, it also says something about um, psychology or mental health of people and how we take it in this country. Sometimes these people are not mentally okay. So it's, it goes beyond sending someone to prison. Mm. Why are you sending him to prison? Why did he do the reason? Have you done any that, evaluation? Yeah, did, he do any, did he do what he did because of something else, not just because he was in his right senses and he did that? If there's something else, can you address that? Because we should be thinking about corrective measures yes. sometimes, not only punishment, punishment, punishment. Um, your last mile officer, you go and hide so that someone will commit a crime, you go and catch the person. I know that happens a what, lot what of What happens time. to you trying to direct the person to do the right thing and all that? Okay, Amaomi. Um, 
Okay, fantastic. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, yes we can hear you. We lost you for a bit. Um, okay, so I think Yambo has a question. Yes, yes. I, I, I was just saying, okay, you, we have established a background to that. We would like to know the provisions of this bill so that we know how far it goes and why it goes that far. Absolutely. So the bill actually offers a very promising solution to the, you know, to the scale of the problem. So first is that the bill seeks to preserve the sanctity of educator and learner's fiduciary relationship. And we all know for a fact that fiduciary relationship is a relationship of trust, authority, dependency, and respect for human dignity. As a matter of fact, you know, the, this particular bill criminalizes the offense of sexual harassment and makes it an offense of strict liability, which means that it's not an excuse that the student actually consented to, you know, being sexually harassed or the student consented to being in a sexual relationship with the educator because the bill actually acknowledges that when we talk about unequal power relations, the person on the other end of the stick clearly lacks capacity to give consent. The bill also makes it an offense of vicarious liability, which means that every institution of higher learning is obliged to ensure that it maintains the minimum standard to ensure that the environment of learning is safe and healthy for everyone to thrive and have educational experiences to avoid sexual harassment. And again, the bill actually explicitly defines patterns of sexual harassment. It might just you to know that we have a problem with definitional clarity. Mm. It's not that we do not have existing legislation. We have the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act mm. of 2015, you know, which 35 states in Nigeria are well domesticated. But the offense of sexual harassment is a serious problem that requires a dedicated piece of legislation. We have the ICPC Act that also addresses sexual harassment as a form of power abuse. We need more than that. We also have the criminal law of Lagos State that provides for the offense of sexual harassment and upon conviction, you know, you're liable to a jail term of three years. But all these legislations that I just reeled out do not comprehensively address sexual harassment. It doesn't provide for, you know, step-by-step -step grievance redress mechanism. It doesn't provide for compensation to victims of, of, of sexual harassment. It doesn't provide for good formal and reporting and good I think we've lost her again. The um, audio we've seems to be. We've lost her audio again. Yeah, we've lost our audio again. <laughs> we've lost our audio again. Well, technical glitches happens all the time. Um, but yeah, I understand what she's saying. We have all of these laws, but we need something a bit more comprehensive. And from what she's saying, I think this is more about the universities. So they're talking about lecturer and student relationship and the trust in between the lecturer and the student. And the fact that the student cannot really consent because the lecturer is above, so I can influence. That's, that's debatable anyway. But yeah, it, it, debatable. it is debatable, but it's understandable too. Because most times, if you have someone who's higher than you, you, can't really, you can say no, but then you're thinking, if I say no, what will happen? I might get failed, or if I'm working with someone, I might get fired. So there are a lot of things that could happen, and so if, therefore if the lecturer, it could. If the lecturer is asking, he becomes the criminal. Mm -hmm. Now, if they, let's use a lady now because it's not the guy. Mm -hmm. If the, the lady now, the student is asking, who becomes the criminal? Well, the, the lecturer again who consented well, I, to I, that. I think it should be both. And the reason mm -hmm. why so, I say this yes. is because first the student asks for it, so first you're already a criminal. Then the lecturer who consented, I mean, you're in a place of authority. You should know better. Mm -hmm. You cannot consent to having sexual relations with your students. For crying out loud, you've, you've seen in other cases, I think there was, a, there was an actress, mm -hmm. her partner used to be like a football coach or something, and then he had sexual relations with another person on his team, and they fired him for that because you were in a place of authority, so you should know better. You cannot consent to that. Even if someone is giving you a proposition and saying, this is what I want, you should say no. Because of this relationship that we have, student lecturer relationship, it cannot happen. If I wasn't your lecturer, and maybe we fell in love in another place, why not? But for right now, we can't. Well, Anyways, that's, that's, I think Omaomi is back, but we're kind of out of time. Omaomi, I want to know if you have any landing points on this bill. 
so that yes. we can wrap so up. So I just want to say that at the moment, Nigerian students, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Yeah. So, yeah, so I just want to say that at the moment, Nigerian students have rallied around and in solidarity. Okay, the audio is out again. Well, this this is um this is a, a, a continuing story yes. as it is. The bill is still out there, and uh, the the campaign is <clears throat> is it lend or give a pen to the president or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it shows that the reason the president is not signing this bill is probably because he has no pen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was funny when I read that. Uh, but so we should we should try to donate a pen, a pen to, to the him president so he can sign it. So that he can sign it. I have one here. <laughs> You're <laughs> donating that. That's a presidential pen. Yeah. Okay, but it is really important that uh, we define these things. Uh, yeah. No matter what we're saying, even in elections, there are some things that we thought were very good. And after holding election in 2023, we saw that they needed to have defined it this properly. thing properly. So if you leave things to chance, a lot of loopholes can be seen and exploited which mm -hmm. is not good for us so in spite of the fact that we have all these laws put in place we should have like she said we have a problem defining things mm. we should define everything as much as possible well all right we should wrap it up today. We should wrap it up. it's been a good week i mean it's yeah. the weekend i'm excited for the weekend i want to um rest and have some fun with my family and friends. Mm -hmm. It's the Christmas season, come don't on. Worry, don't worry, <laughs> We are all going to have fun, no matter how it is. Sleeping alone is it's fun, fun, especially if you live in Lagos. But let's do it again on Monday, and we're hoping you're going to have a wonderful weekend. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rame Paulson. Have an amazing weekend. <laughs>